From here on out, I ride it on the board every day. You got to hear me. This is getting to be too much. Vidikamo Bhuvakrodo. Vidikamo Bhuvakrodo. Lobashada Radachada. Lobashada Radachada. Ashad Vax in the Bohedron. Ashad Vax in the Bohedron. Giriti Payo Agasaya. Giriti Payo Agasaya. Vidikamo Bhuvakrodo. service to the Lord. When one is frustrated in lust and low desires, anger is generated from the mind and, ex and expressed from between the eyebrows. Ordinary men are therefore advised to concentrate the mind by focusing on the place between the eyebrows, whereas the devotees of the Lord are already practiced to place the Supreme Personality of Godhead on the seat of their minds. The theory of becoming desireless is untenable because the mind cannot be made desireless. 
When it is recommended that one be desireless, it is understood that one should not desire things which are destructive to spiritual value. A devotee of the Lord always has the Lord in his mind, and thus he does not need to be desireless, because all his desires are in relationship with the service of the Lord. The power of speaking is called Saraswati, or the goddess of learning, and the birthplace of the goddess of learning is the mouth of Brahma. Even if a man is endowed with the favor of the goddess of learning, it is quite possible for his heart to be full of lust and material desire, and his eyebrows to display symptoms of anger. One may be very learned in the mundane estimation, but that does not mean that he is free from all, all low activities of lust and anger. Good qualifications can be expected only from a pure devotee who is always engaged in the thought of the Lord or in samadhi with faith. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport to the 26th sloka of the 3rd canto, 12th chapter, creation of the Kumaras and Abbas. Srila Prabhupada Ki Om Aganati Miranda Shyagyananjana Shilakaya Kachun Militam Yena Tadmai Shri Gurabe Namaha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangam Lingayate Gidim Yakripa Tamaham Vande Shri Guru Dinatarinam Paramananda Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Iswaram <clears throat> I offer my humble and respectful obeisances on His Divine Grace, Shri A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Shri Prabhupada who is so kindly opening our eyes with the torch of knowledge. By the mercy of the spiritual master, even a blind person can see the stars in the sky, a fool can speak poetry, and a lame man can cross mountains. Srila Prabhupada, ki Yeah. So, uh, uh, this is the nature of the material world. Uh, uh, Lord Brahma is creating on behalf of the Lord so that the living entities can and, and have some uh, enjoyment that they're so desiring. Uh, it begins from the germs all the way up to the mammals. Uh, before human birth, it's said that the soul passes through the body of bovines or cows, bulls. Uh, that's coming through the modes of goodness. The material nature or the energy of this inferior energy of the Lord is composed of this uh, rajas and tamas and sattvic gunas, uh, these qualities of goodness, passion, and darkness. So souls that are coming through the line or the modes of goodness, their last birth before human birth are as cows. And those souls coming through the modes of passion, their last birth is big cats like lions and tigers, leopards, things like that creatures like that. And the last birth of those appearing through the dark modes are apes, chimpanzees, 
monkeys. Then finally one gets to human birth, but in the human birth, you know, we're all still plagued with uh, lust, anger, greed. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna teaches us, one should give up lust, anger, and greed. He says in English, it is the royal road to hell. You know, we become so lusty, we'll cheat and steal, uh, we'll manipulate, we'll do all kinds of things to fulfill that, those ambitions. And if that uh, if there anything comes in the way, we can become very angry and actually harm others. So all the all this uh, intense material desire uh, simply will take the soul to hell. Now the lower creatures, mammals, insects, reptiles, uh, plants and trees and insects, all the way down to germs. They're only, the souls in those bodies are only progressing upward. There is no sin, so to speak. They don't do anything wrong. It's just all controlled by nature, and they're perfectly under the control of nature. Like a person in prison who simply does what the warden and the gods tell them to do and don't really cause a disturbance. You know, they wake up when they're woken, you know, they, they, they use the bathroom, they go out and do whatever their duties are, they take lunch when they're told to take lunch, they go and read or go to the exercise yard when they're told to do that, and they go to bed when it's time to go to bed. So, uh, the, the lower creatures are like that, you know. Tigers don't go and eat the same things that cows eat. You know, they have their quota and that's all they eat. And they have their, their time for be, begetting progeny. Other than that, they, they're not moved by that mode. It's only when the, the modes of nature move them do they act. But a human being has freedom. He can continue to follow these lower modes if he wants. Or he can take the lessons that are given uh, to human beings to progress upward and become more valuable in the Lord's service. He can progress upwards materially and take a more responsible position than a human, or maybe even in human society he can progress upward to take a more responsible position, such as a leader, a governor, uh, who's you know responsible for protecting uh, human society. You know, they, you know, they have to, you know, we, we see all the governors even today when there's natural disasters coming, they make arrangements for the people, they make arrangements after the disasters for, to try to put things back together. You know, they're at the forefront of dealing with uh, all the difficulties in human life, trying to make things better for society. Economically, uh, 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 um, you know, I, I use the word piously, or, you know, for, for, for there to be no crime in society. Um, uh, and for people to have sufficient uh, homes and shelters and uh, food on the table, you know, uh, work and employment, they, you know, they try to arrange all these things. So, it's, you know, the, the, the leaders of society are very important people in human society. And uh, even for even uh, even greater of the teachers who would teach these people, you know, they're most important. If there's no one to teach, then you know, people are simply going, going to try to figure it all out themselves, and there'll be so many mistakes. But there are teachers there to teach people, you know, how to act, how to behave, how to get a job done, you know all the way into even vocational activities like, you know, fixing cars and putting in electricity and, um, uh, uh, you know, taking care of plumbing and stuff like that. So, uh, uh, one may progress upward to a, a teacher or a leader and then beyond and ever positions in the universe may become a deva or a demigod that 
that actually facilitates the whole universe rather than just one little planet and you know with one species of life on uh, that uh, is sort of managing the show. No, one may manage the whole universe for the Lord. <clears throat> but ultimately, in human life, the soul can actually bring an end to all misery. The miseries uh, uh, cannot be escaped otherwise. Now there's, you know, we can, we can try with our pharmaceutical uh, medicines, we can try with, you know, good exercise and diet, you know, we can try with, you know, a grand education, you know, trying to learn, you know, everything that's possible to learn in human uh, society. You know, we can try so many means, but still we're going to suffer from disease and old age and death. No, no, no doctor has been able to save any of their patients. They all pass away, ultimately. So the doctor cannot ultimately save us. And they don't, unfortunately, they, don't, they don't, do not know what happens after death. But of course, that information has been available since time immemorial. After death, Krishna says, one just takes another body based upon one's mentality, based upon their previous deeds and their mentality. Would they remember the time of death? What they so desire, they progress to their next body. So there, there's no stopping this birth, death, old age, and disease. These are the miseries of life that have to be uh, dealt with. But, you know, we don't advertise that other than ISKCON and some other religious and uh, spiritual institutions. There's... There's, there's no one dealing with these problems. You know, one has to enter into uh, uh, the devotional service of the Lord, uh, you know, to uh, bring an end to these problems. Then, you know, everything can become very easy. That's why in the last sentence, Srila Prabhupada, he, he's, he's speaking to the whole purport that, you know, we may attempt to be most intelligent and, 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 and very good. But we're all under the control of our psychics. And those psychics may be all wound up in different degrees of lust and anger and, and, and uh, greed. You know, we, we may have all sorts of uh, infatuations deep inside of our heart and mind. And there's no escaping it despite our learning. You know, that it, it, it's going to come out one way or another. It happens to the most intelligent people in society make mistakes. It happens all the time to leaders. They make mistakes. You know, it, it's, it's something that unfortunately happens. So how can we learn to control the mind and senses? You know, there, there's different people trying to teach different techniques, but um, ultimately what Krishna teaches, what the Vedic knowledge teaches, is that one needs to enter into their sanatan dharma, their eternal occupation, their, their natural constitutional position is an eternal servant of God. When we start serving God, then we become like God. If we are ignoring God's service and just trying to serve humanity or my family or my own self, then there's no escaping uh, whatever gunas or molds that we've created from our previous births. There's no escaping it. It's going to come out naturally. But if I put aside uh, my service to humanity, God, the, um, not, not God, but the planet, and I take up my service to God. I understand there's a supreme controller, supreme Ishwar, uh, and I realize that it's ultimately my duty to serve that person. And I, I actually uh, make that attempt. Then, 
by, by natural um, nature, in his association, the soul becomes free from those things that are really not a part of it. Actually, this, this material energy, these material modes, there's a lust, anger, and greed that are generated from passion and ignorance and mundane goodness. They're not really a part of the self, the soul. The soul is ultimately like God, free from any um, material uh, nature. But uh, without God's association, you know, the soul cannot be like God. Srila Prabhupada gives the example of sparks of a fire that leap out of the fire and some fall onto dry grass and they start a little fire. Or some fall, uh, you know, into the dirt and they extinguish pretty rapidly. And some fall into water and simply diminish immediately. So it, it's similar to the soul uh, uh, entering into the dark modes. It's like entering into the spark of a fire and entering into water. The passionate mode is like a spark falling onto the ground. And a um, soul that falls into some dry grass and creates a little fire, that's like falling into the mode of goodness. But, you know, that, that is not our nature. You know, our nature is to be a part of the fire, to be serving the fire, not to leap out of the fire and try to, try to be the fire. You know, we're not God. We're the servant of God. This is what has ruined society. You know, people thinking in silly ways that they're God, many times not even realizing that they're thinking they're God. They're just thinking that the source of everything is something impersonal or void. In this way, they simply sweep God out of the room. Oh, there's no God. How can there be a supreme person? It's just mythology. You know, they just get rid of God. And they think that, you know, re religion and yoga and, you know, study of scriptures is meant to become uh, one with the absolute truth. And that there, there is no uh, personality of Godhead. Consequently, I'm not a person. Because there's no personality of Godhead, you know, people come from people. Persons come from persons. So if there's no personality of Godhead, there is no personalities. So this is, you know, we don't need to follow, you know, Krishna's teachings. You know, because we have no faith in them. So how to uh, have faith again in God, again in the Supreme Person? You know, we have to come in contact with God. You know, uh, immediately, you know, our, our, our instincts, our spiritual instincts will come out and we'll give up the instinct to um, be a part of this material nature, uh, which is ultimately not natural for the soul. It's natural to be a part, an apostle of God. It's natural to be a servant of God. It's natural to have spiritual desires, to want to serve God and to carry out his uh, mission and to um, bring forth his enjoyment, uh, to serve him in various ways according to how his devotees and his self you know, appreciate. So these, this is natural. What's not natural is to ignore God and to simply... Uh, uh, become selfish and try to en 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 enjoy uh, without serving him. You know, he's responsible for everything. He's created everything. But somehow, ever, I think I don't need to serve him. I don't, I don't have any faith in him. Why should I bother with him? You know, that's a person's choice. Do what you want to do. And, we, and certainly a person can do that, but then we're under the control of that material nature. I'll get what I deserve. All the good things I've done, I will receive that reward. But all the bad things I've done, knowingly or unknowingly, I'm going to get that reward. So therefore, this material nature is not natural for the soul because it means I have to suffer and enjoy according to my karma. And to do that, I have to continually repeat it over and over again because I'm ignoring what is actually eternal, blissful, and full of life. 
I'm ignoring God in his service because I have no faith. So to bring that faith back into people's hearts, that is the mission of our Hare Krishna movement. You know, we have to become God's devotee. You know, we have to give our service capacity to God, our love to God, our heart to God to Sri Krishna. And if not, this is uh, what Lord Chaitanya is teaching. This is Lord Chaitanya's movement. You know, they've made it extremely easy for people. You know, people, you know, may not have any clue, so to speak. Uh, but anyone who hears the chanting of Hare Krishna, with to speak of getting the mantra and chanting the mantra, it all begins that with uh, uh, becoming in touch again with that Supreme Person. And a person's uh, natural constitution begins to manifest to the servant of God. People become happy again. One becomes free from these uh, crazy infatuations that bother us, that can bring down even the greatest and most powerful people. Uh, there are so many examples. There was one lady who became the CEO of a company back in the uh, early 2000s, you know, which is, you know, there hadn't been any other, practically speaking, no other lady had become CEO of a big corporation. So there was, there is this corporation that put out those um, with, uh, Barbie dolls that everybody's familiar with. So, uh, you know, they made a lot of money. Everybody bought that. But at one point, the sales ticked off, the business was doing bad, and this lady was hired. And somehow ever, she made Bobby popular again. And that, you know, it became 35% of the profit of that business. So after a couple of years, she went to the CEO and demanded a better position. And he gave it to her. And then a few years later, after being successful, she demanded more. In fact, she wanted to become, she wanted a guarantee that she would become the CEO. So he gave her a good contract. And he said, if you don't become the CEO, we'll give you five years of your pay. This and this and that. So she was satisfied. And at the end, it was recommended when, they, when the CEO that had been managing this company and making it prosperous stepped down, she became the CEO. <laughs> Unfortunately, in two years' time, she was asked to resign, and she herself resigned, having made some fatal mistakes out of uh, her great ambitions uh, to lead the company. She just wasn't cut out to run that position. She was great at marketing, but she couldn't do that job. And she had made some mistakes. It ruined the profits of the company. And the company uh, you had to take measures to deal with it, and they, they asked her to step down. Hey, so it can happen to anyone. It, it, there's a, uh, in the, the corporate world, there's a theory that you rise to your level of incompetence. <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. That was what it was. That's what it was declared. She was somewhat incompetent in that field. Really and the, the mistake that she made, the biggest mistake she made, she thought that by purchasing this company that was a learning online company and that everything was going to be going online. This is back in 2003, 2002. Everything was going to be going online. So it seemed very intelligent. We should buy this company and combine with it. We'll, you know, we're going to just explode. But somehow ever, just the opposite happened. And that company just drained the money from this ever, you know, from the company that she was running. So that was a fatal mistake. She, she spent, she, you know, Bobby's sales dropped off. She was spending time trying to make this merger happen. She just couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. And, you know, just, just made a wrong purchase. Just, you know, as CEO, CEO, she could actually do that. She went out and made this, like, billion-dollar purchase of this company to try to, you know, become even, their company to become even greater, but it all failed. And, 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 
and that was her incompetency. That's what it was. That's how she was incompetent. And and the deeper point is is that that play was already written. Yeah. Her destiny, her karma, <laughs> is already written, and that's the hard part for people to understand is that the conditioned souls we think we're the doer. That's right. So she thought, I'm the doer. The company yeah. thinks they're the doer. People think she's the doer. We all think she's the doer. We think we're the doer. So we don't understand that everything is going on according to your, as you so socially read, and the, and the modes of nature mm -hmm. are manifesting. And it's very difficult. Only the devotee with refined intelligence can go deep enough to start to understand, like when Maj Pritchett met Dharma, Dharma was standing on one leg. Mm -hmm. And so Maj Pritchett said, who's done this to you? Mm -hmm. And Dharma looked at him and said, if I blame somebody, I'm as guilty as him. Mm -hmm. And so the conversation goes end to the end to understanding how the actual doer is the superstar, Krishna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have to come back into Krishna's association and in due course of time that refined spiritual intelligence will completely manifest. But, you know, it takes surrender, and, um, you know, surrender takes time. Nobody jumps in and the next day walks out a Maharaj Purich, you know. Unless they did it in a previous life. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. you have some rare cases yeah. like that, but generally speaking, all of us fools and rascals, you know, we, we suffer through life trying to serve God and have to, uh, you know, be embarrassed by all the mistakes that we made, but if we just remain surrendered, then mm -hmm. gradually Krishna cleans us up and we yeah. go back home to Godhead. You know? Yet at the same time, when Sri Prabhupada was here, you heard him say, you can go back home back to Godhead in this lifetime. Yeah, yeah. And he says, I'm not flattering you. Right. Said Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, yet, I read just the other day where Prabhupada said, you can't expect to go back home in one lifetime. <laughs> Yeah, you can you can you can understand how you know how, how difficult it's been. I mean, it's the easiest process, but at the same time, it's very difficult to uh, uh, be in the showers. Prabhupada would use the analogy of being in the shower and getting rid of all the dirt, or being you know serving Krishna and, and having to admit our faults and all of our mistakes and apologize and. And, you know, and, and, and ask for forgiveness and at the same time, you know, forgive others for their mistakes and, you know, and, and, and just go on trying to be uh, a humble devotee like Lord Chaitanya teaches. I mean, that solves all of our problems when we can, when we can just surrender to Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya says, why are you thinking otherwise? Think of yourself as lower than the straw in the street. Well, that can be a little bit difficult to do. You know, but it ends, the, it ends all of our problems. I am lower than the straw in the street. Therefore, I'm not. And it, it goes directly to this verse. Hmm. Directly to this point you just made is directly to this verse where Prophet said, only the person, like you're saying, has become Christian conscious, uh, yeah. can develop the qualities where that seated within that eyebrow is the Supreme Personality of God hmm. instead of that anger, lust, and all that. So you're making a very deep point. Yeah, instead of being, Prabhupada said, said, instead of being controlled by that psychic nature, by serving Krishna, then we become free from that, that nature's control. Mm -hmm. Because of that contact with Krishna, you know, we have to, you know, we have to be very uh, serious to stay in Krishna's association and to render him service. It's a, it's a great job. Uh, our god brother, Burijan Prabhu, when he was a grahasta, he's still a grahasta, but when he was uh, not living in Vendavan, he was living in Hong Kong and then he was living in Australia, and he had created some business. So he very strictly used the profits of that business to serve Prabhupada. And every month he would send Prabhupada a check. You know, and, uh, amazingly enough, of uh, 50% of his income, which was amazing because hardly anybody can do that. You know, generally speaking, we, you know, most people tie at most 10%. And it's usually of their profits, you know, after paying all expenses. So devotees have tried to interpret what Prabhupada meant. And most of his, uh, most of his uh, lean to a, if it was 50%, it had to be 50% of the profit. So 
first we had you know pay rent and utilities and boga bills and medical bills and then whatever's left you know we can divide it like that have a life which you know it becomes very hard to live so um, somehow ever Buddha John managed to do that and he, you know and then you know gradually uh, he gave up that business and became a teacher in the Gurukula system. Some people think it's like we should use the example of Sanatana Goswami that when he was retired from or mm -hmm. changing, then he split up so much with the family. So yeah, like that. he gave, uh, a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he gave 50% to the Brahmins and Vaishnavas, mm -hmm. a quarter of it to his family and a quarter he kept on the side for emergencies mm -hmm. and that's how he was able to ultimately get his freedom and take shelter of Lord Chaitanya. He needed that emergency money to get his release from his mundane situation. Yeah. Or you could just give it all. Yeah. Like Prabhupada did, just give everything. For me, it was easy when I moved into the temple because all I had was fifty dollars and a guitar. And <laughs> me, too. me too. It's not to go small. It's not to took that, and it's not to took that. Right away, go on the guitar and spend the fifty dollars. <laughs> okay, so we're very fortunate because we came under the uh, direct control of Sri Prabhupada. You know, it's like we don't realize how fortunate we are that you know at that time. You didn't have to worry about like these young people now, they have to figure all this, you know, things out and all that. All we had to do was just lay down a sleeping bag, take rest, you know, get up in the morning, set our obeisances, take our shower, go to Mangalarti, chant our rounds, get beside them and try to serve. Yeah, we have to do the different generation because I could see the switch and the change happening around sometime in the early eighties. It was no longer just, you know, there's your space over there uh, in, the, in that room. You can just sleep over there. It became, now it became a negotiation. I want this standard of living. I'll do this so many hours. Then I expect this for myself. It, it wasn't the same anymore. It just let me just surrender to the movement. Now it became, well, I have my family and you have yours. And it, 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 was, it was a, it's still going on like but we've increased the numbers. So, but there's still, you know, those surrendered souls that uh, just wake up and engage in their sudden and then just do this yeah. and just serve all day long, you know. Uh, just like, you know, Bhakti Prakash's uh, disciples there in Atlanta that just go out and distribute books. So you have ashrams, you do have, you do have brahmacharis who, uh, who are able to do that. You still have sannyasis that are able to do that. You even have a lot of grahasas they would do that, but but most you know most people are part of our congregation or they're you know they're mixed devotees that are living according to Bon Ashram. You know they're doing their dharma according to Bon Ashram and uh, trying to elevate themselves. See, even back then, like there was a brahmachari in Atlanta, and he he was a pretty staunch devotee, but. Everybody knew uh, he had $150,000 in a trust fund and he was not ever going to surrender. And he's a brahmacharya. Plus, he had his own car. We, we all, I gave all the money I had, I gave everything up and opportunities up. And he, some people just always had that, you know, escape hatch. And then when Prabhupada left, they took it. They have their rationalizations. Mm. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to turn this off. We can talk off camera. You know, oh, yeah, sure. I don't even know if they can yeah. hear you way back there. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Ram. Hare Ram. Remember Bhai Kunta, when he first came to New Orleans, he was bragging how he was given 50%. Yeah, he didn't have one. The plate.